Everywhere you turn these days on the internet and television, pros are telling you you need to use premium fluorocarbons just like these. And today I'm going to tell you why that could be a huge waste of money, and I'm going to set you straight. I'm going to explain to you why you really don't need these expensive fluorocarbons and how I'm going to save you a bunch of money fishing. It's winter right now, and where I'm recording this video, I'm getting my tackle to get ready for spring. I'm taking inventory, looking at all the fluorocarbon lines that I have, and it really got me thinking, now is a good time, and I really want to talk to you about fluorocarbon lines, how I use them, what I use, and how that can help you make better decisions for how you use your fluorocarbon and save you some money as you prepare and get stocked up for the spring fishing season. As I mentioned before, everywhere, TV, pros, Instagram, social media, YouTube, television, everybody's telling you about all these really expensive fluorocarbons. That's the only thing they use. That's all you should use. And that's the only way you're going to ever catch a bass, which creates an overall sentiment that you really need to spend 30, 40, $50 on a spool of fluorocarbon just to catch a fish. That's just not true. Not to mention when you go into the stores and look online, everywhere you look, the choices and the amount of fluorocarbon to choose from is really, really overwhelming and can be confusing. First off, you don't need fluorocarbon of any kind to catch a bass or a fish. Fluorocarbon is nice. It does have its perk. It does have its advantages, but monos and copolys are great lines as well. And they catch a ton of bass they have for years and the technology is advanced and they're really good lines. And I still use them today. So if you need to fish in, don't feel super pressured to get fluorocarbon. But if you want to get into fluorocarbon and want to understand some of the best budget fluorocarbon lines to use and how to use them and when to use them, this video is for you. Like I said before, fluorocarbon and budget fluorocarbons have their advantages. The invisibility, the low stretch, the sinking line in certain applications can be really good for fishing. The two budget lines that I really like best are Sunline Assassin and Seaguar Red Label. They're readily available. You can find them anywhere and they don't break the bank if you want to dip into fluorocarbon and use them for certain techniques. And for some applications, I actually prefer them. And we're going to talk about that very soon. Before everybody goes crazy in the comments and says, Hella, we see you. You talk about in your videos. You use Invisix. You use Sniper. You even use Tatsu. That is true. There are certain applications where I do love my bougie premium fluorocarbon, but it's not for everything. And I don't think you need it if you're just getting into fluorocarbon. You probably should learn on some of these budget friendly lines before you dive in and start spending money on more expensive fluorocarbon. Plus, I don't use these for all applications. There's limited applications when I use these and when I reach for my budget floral. So what's the difference between your premium and your budget florals? Well, as a basic trend, now there's a little bit different in each category. Every line's a little bit different, but your lower end line, most of them are still 100% fluorocarbon. They're typically a little less manageable on your spool. So uh, on spinning reels, they're not great. But on casting reels, they'll hold up okay, but they're not going to be as limp. You're going to have a little bit more memory. In general, sometimes they're a little less abrasion resistant, and sometimes they have a bit more stretch. So things are just consider when you're fishing them and you can actually play into those strengths of those lines for certain applications so as you go up typically you get better strength better line management more limp abrasion resistance things like that but you don't need that for everything like i said there are a few drawbacks and some limitations to some of these budget lines but that doesn't make them a bad choice for instance the abrasion resistance right i really like these budget fluorocarbon lines for swim jigs spinner baits crankbaits, chatterbaits, moving baits, where I'm fishing them on reaction rods. I'm fishing them in middle to high in the water column. I'm not actually dragging the bottom. I'm not coming through heavy cover. So abrasion resistant is not quite as paramount as it is with maybe a jig or a football jig or a Carolina rig or something like that. Also, they may have a little more stretch, which is good for reaction baits. That actually makes them fish a little bit more like a high-grade mono or copoly, but you still get the sinking. You still get a little bit less stretch than copoly, so you find that happy medium for things like crankbaits when you're fishing them on a crankbait rod or something like that, as well as the increased sensitivity. They still cast really well on bait casting rods. I wouldn't necessarily use them on spinning rods, using them straight floral on a spinning rod. These rod, these typically, these lines will run into trouble if you're going to spool 10, 12 fluorocarbon straight onto a spinning reel. There, I would rather go down to mono, or I would step it up in fluorocarbon. What I'd really recommend is just doing braid to liters, and we'll talk about that later. For applications, reaction baits, moving baits, the juice just isn't worth the squeeze. I don't need expensive line like this to throw a chatterbait, throw a crankbait, throw a spinnerbait. These lines do a great job for me, and I think they actually fit the application a little better. That way, I'm not spending a ton of money, and about half my rods are spooled up with budget-friendly fluorocarbon, and then I save the higher-end stuff for just a few select techniques. So when do I reach for these premium lines, you ask? Well, it's pretty simple. Sniper and Vizix are my go-to lines for jigs, Texas rigs, flipping, skipping around docks, shallow cover, basically bottom contact, dragging, flipping, and where I'm going to have abrupt, hard hook sets. 
these lines are going to see the most abuse and torture of any of the techniques I use. So that's where I want to invest in my higher end fluorocarbon. On a long cast with a spinnerbait or a chatterbait with a reaction rod, which has a little softer action, I'm not worried about the shock absorption of a budget fluorocarbon line. So premium lines for bottom, heavy cover, things like that. Budget lines for reaction baits. That's how I break it down. And lastly, Tatsu. It's an amazing, buttery, smooth line that's super strong, super amazing. It's truly one of my favorite lines. But it comes at a premium that I'm just not willing to spend on a day-to-day -day basis. So I have used it on my bait casting. I've used it flipping and pitching. It performs flawlessly. If you can afford it, it's an amazing line. But it brings me to tears to think about backlashing this, putting a bunch of kinks in it, and ruining a spool of line that's going to cost me $20, $30, $40 just to re-spool. So this is mainly reserved for leaders on drop shot, shaky heads, things like that. So I'll spool up 8, 10-pound line. And at a leader cost, it's actually pretty affordable to run Tatsu and other premium fluorocarbons as a leader. I'm going to show you right here. Here's kind of a breakdown of all the lines we talked about as the retail cost shown at Omnia Fishing. And you can kind of get a feel for the range of the lines from the less expensive, the most expensive, what you get, the cost per yard per on spool. And kind of the, you know, we're looking at, you know, looking at seven, eight cents per yard for the budget, 10 to 12 cents for your premium. And then for the ultra premium, we're talking almost 20 cents per yard. So it's a pretty big jump to get up to that tattoo. So when do I choose Sunline Assassin versus Seaguard Red Level? It really comes down to what I can get on sale what I can find available when I need it. And both these lines serve me really well for reaction baits. So hard to beat either one of these. Seaguar Red Label is typically a little less expensive, but they're both great lines. Plus, I have links in the description down below to all these lines. And if any of these catch your eye or something you want to try, just check out the links down in the description. Grab them. Easy to find. If you want to learn about more about fluorocarbon leaders and managing fluorocarbon on your spinning rods, make sure you watch this video right here.